Um, okay, and then um, on this side here, like I said, this is like a pitch, these are pitch tone uh, contacts. Um, the first one you can hit by itself, which is like, a, in both of these cases, like I said before, the lower one is the main, and then the other two are like um, mods uh, against that main. So, or ground or whatever you want to call it. Um, so like this one here, uh, you can touch it by itself and it will actually change the pitch. pitch. Um, this second one, eh, it's kind of like makes it go a little higher, but it kind of has like, like this weird sort of um, scratchiness to it. And then this one here is like a, even like an, another lower pitch. But So those kind of sound like this. Oh. Again, I'll do this demonstration with this particular. So. So you see how that works? And then if you touch this one with this one. Oh, there's it broke on me. Probably because my hands are a little sweaty, that's probably why. You know, it's like it increases the, uh, you know, the wetter your hands are, the, the more you're... Oh, wow, it's not... There's a, so there's the scratchy. There's the real low, okay. Um, it will normally work better. Um, if my hands weren't so moist, it wouldn't be as bad. But you know, I kind of got you know moist hands today. But anyway, um, you always want to watch that when you're using your contacts because um, you know if your hands are really wet, um, which mine are, because it's warm in my house right now um, then um, you know obviously you're gonna get less resistance and uh, you know more likely they'll crash and that sort of thing because really these are meant to be used with your you know your body and it's not you know so you got like a you know a decent amount of resistance there um, this is a um, uh, this switch right here this is a tone switch uh, which just creates a tone um, which and this knob here controls the volume of that tone so you can, and this this doesn't ch change the volume of anything else. So you can actually, this helps you um, basically, um, you know, put this in in the background. And this, with you know, certain types of distortion and, and looping and everything else that's going on, it's kind of neat to be able to do it. And you can actually, uh, I use this in combination in both of these pitch switches. There's a low pitch here and uh, high pitch and I'll use it with this tone just to demonstrate what they do. Now these also affect everything else that's going on in here as well so um, you can do some really cool things. Now this low switch has a click on it so you can set each of these pitches at different settings so like for example this one you can you know turn up this is a high pitch I'll just turn it up all the way and then this is the lower which you can you know, well, you can, you, it finishes it out here, and uh, you know, you can't go too low with that, obviously. But so, for example, here's our here's our tone. And then by clicking on here, you can kind of. And uh, what's kind of neat about that is that you can, um, like, if you had a, if you had a, if you're playing this through the song, you can um, uh, basically, uh, you know, you have like a, t uh, let's say a, you know, a key you want to be in. You can actually set these, preset these, tune these two to that key, so you get two separate tones. And by flipping this back and forth. You can, uh, you know, go back and forth between that. And sometimes even with the loops and everything else, you can actually, um, you know, do a, uh, you know, uh, uh, one timing, and then actually you can double time it on here, so you can be like, you know, versus type of tone, you know, type of uh, loop. So uh, it has a lot of different loops. So this is the thing I think is most unique about my design, you know, aside from like all the other. I mean, it's got a lot of mods on it, but um, is this, these two here, and you'll see why when I start playing it why it's uh, um, kind of an interesting thing but because um, you can do a lot of things especially even on the fly with it um, that creates some really interesting uh, sounds um, okay so what else are we going here oh, that's about it I've covered just about everything that's on here um, 
So now we'll uh, try and do some things and make sure you how this works. Oh, I also wanted to explain, which I forgot, is that um, I'm having I'm running the uh, this right now through a uh, PA system. Let me just disconnect the camera here. And uh, so this is going through a. This is just has a. Uh, I'm just using the regular headphone out because uh, it works. And why add stuff if you don't need to add it? Because there's more stuff that can break or screw up on you. Um, and I'm just running that through a. Um, just a PV, just a cheap PV uh, board. Um, it's nothing fancy at all. Uh, I'm just putting it through here, and it's um, no gain though. You don't need any gain because it already has its own, uh, you know, preamp for the headphones. So no gain. Whatever you do, I mean, you'll find that out the hard way. Um, and uh, you know, I got it set about there, and you know, I'm, this is a pretty loud PA, so I got the volumes down here because I'm actually recording what I'm playing on my uh, home studio too, just for posterity. Uh, monitor out here. Uh, it's just a crown amplifier, and we've got um, I got like a tiny little bit of reverb going here. You can see the mix right here, and this is like a pretty mellow reverb. This 16, which is just like a short reverb, um, as you can see right there. Okay, so there's not really much going on there. Um, it's just for you know, just so it doesn't sound like we're in like a you know dead room. And we just got you know. I just got one PA speaker running right now. And that's all it is. Uh, there's also a couple not condition issues, but things I think I should probably mention about it is um uh well first thing my handwriting is atrocious. So if you got a problem with that, I don't know what to tell you, but it'll tell you what to do uh with everything. Um but I found that it actually some of this is supposed to be permanent marker, but it comes off you know, just with my hand sweat, so I'm sure if you probably use a little rubbing alcohol, you could probably get rid of it, um, is my guess. Um, the other thing is, is that there is a, some slight, as you can see right there, there's some slight burnage from soldering iron. It's a little bit of a slip of the hand there, but it doesn't really affect anything. And also, there's so much stuff packed in here that there's, uh, you know, the, the, the lower portion of this device is held together by screws and the upper portion is clips, so the clips are actually a little bit more um, you know, are like uh, not as uh, intense, you know, so really the bottom of this actually gives me the ability to kind of like cram a little bit of stuff in here and then use the screws to kind of tighten it down, so um, so if you know, I just wanted to make sure to point that out that you can kind of see it there, how it kind of like it's a little bit tighter in through here and then gets slightly wider, wider, but there's no gaps or anything in here. You know, some of the dials go in the opposite direction. I did that on purpose because of the uh, angle and also, you know, the, if your hands are getting in here, um, it just made more sense to me to do it that way. So these knobs go in that direction you know um, and uh, the, uh, these knives on the side go in the opposite direction so counterclockwise and these are clockwise over here just uh, something that I thought would work better and uh, that's about it